Okay, so in mathematics, if you ever left your final answer like this on a test, quiz, or an exam, you would have points uh, be taken off your answer. Now, let's suppose this answer is uh, kind of uh, numerically correct, but if you left it in this form, this is wrong, and you would, again, uh, have some points deducted, which would make a lot of you out there upset. You'd be like, why is this so? This looks perfectly fine to me. Well, no, there is a big problem with leaving a value like this. So here is my question to you. Do you know what the problem is, number one? And number two, can you fix it? All right, so we're gonna be doing this without the aid of a calculator. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answers into the comment section. I'll show you the right answers in just one second, and then I'll explain this thoroughly step by step. And this is critical, especially for those of you out there that are studying algebra. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so three over the square root of 18, what is this equal to? And of course, why is this wrong? Well, let me go ahead and just uh, tell you the first part of this uh, answer, okay? So the reason why this is incorrect, I'm gonna explain this thoroughly, is because we are dividing by an irrational number. Effectively, we have an irrational number in the denominator, okay? We have a square root uh, in the denominator that cannot be fully simplified as a rational number. And if you're like, I'm totally confused, don't worry, I'll explain this in one second, but that's the reason why this is wrong, okay? Number one, you cannot divide by an irrational number, okay, mathematics, but we can fix this up. And if you did fix this up properly, the correct answer would be the following, okay? The square root of two over two, this is the correct answer. Okay, so even if you weren't quite certain on the reason why, uh, this expression wasn't correct, but you were able to fix it up. That's still fantastic. And uh, let's go to celebrate by giving you a nice happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional certified expert in the area of rationalizing the denominator when it comes to radical and square root expressions. They will be like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but you're pretty smart. I think I'm gonna take you out to lunch because one day you might be a bigwig. Anyways, all jokes aside, if you're totally confused, you will not be confused. You just gotta watch the rest of this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. And one other last comment here, well, actually I'll make that comment right now. As I uh, stated that we're not using a calculator here, right? In other words, we're not gonna go three divided by the square root of 18. Now we could get a value here, but this would be an approximate uh, decimal value, okay? So if you were solving an equation, you could technically uh, kind of do this, but this will be like maybe 1% of the time uh, in terms of uh, having to do that in mathematics versus having to simplify this. Again, I'm speaking to those of you that are taking some sort of math course, right? So we're gonna be putting our calculators away. We're just going to be using that supercomputer. And if you don't know where your supercomputer is at, it's located right up here in between your ears. All right, let's go ahead and get going now. So three divided by the square root of 18. Now, let's suppose I said, go ahead and get your calculators. Let's just get this out of our system. And let's take the square root of 18 in our calculator. Well, you would get a decimal approximately uh, equal to this decimal, okay? Now, I'm saying this approximately because here's the problem. When I take the square root of 18 on my calculator, I'm gonna get 4.2426406876. And this goes on and on and on and on until infinity. Now, uh, I don't know about you, I don't have until infinity and neither do you. So we certainly don't wanna write out infinite amount of digits. This is what we call an irrational number uh, in mathematics. And that means that it's, a, it's a, effectively, they're almost always uh, square roots. Uh, not always, but you can even like have the number pi if you're familiar with that. But basically uh, an irrational number 
is a uh, decimal that doesn't repeat and it doesn't terminate. In other words, we don't see any pattern here. It's not, it's not like the number 4.33333 and these go on and on and on. This would be 4.3 repeating. So this is a repeating decimal or even a pattern like this. If I had like 4.2424, um, uh, I have a repeating decimal, okay? So that's a different story than uh, what we have here. This is a uh, non-repeating decimal. So we have 2426-4068, on and on and on. So non-terminating, non-repeating decimal, this is an irrational number, and you cannot divide a number by an irrational number, okay? So we're gonna have to fix this up. And I think a good way to kind of think about it is let's say I had uh, a pizza here, right? And I said, hey, uh, everybody, let's go ahead and divide this pizza up into 4.2426406870 on and on and on and on and on. Uh, I can never get to the end of this number, so I really don't even know, you know, exactly how many different ways to kind of uh, split this pizza up because this number doesn't really make sense to me. Okay, so any way you want to kind of think about it, um, irrational numbers are a part of mathematics. Okay, there's nothing wrong with them, but we do have to be careful uh, in terms of how we deal with them. Okay, you do not want to have something, uh, an irrational number in the denominator. So things like two square root of seven, for example, this is a situation we're going to have to fix. I'll just make something up here. 11 over the square root of three, another situation with an irrational number in the denominator. When you have that kind of scenario, we need to fix this up. And that's what we're going to get into next. But uh, first, I'm going to ask you to see if you can help fix up my subscriber count by hitting that subscribe button. And by the way, if you're going to do that, make sure to hit that notification bell. This really, really does help me. Effectively, what I'm trying to do, okay, is help others learn mathematics. One, uh, people that are just interested in math and uh, those uh, people that are struggling in math, okay? This is a big problem. And it's, it's been going on for a long time, but effectively, so many people struggle in math, and it doesn't have to be that way, okay, at all, okay? What uh, those people need is encouragement, but most importantly, they need great math, math instruction, math instruction that's explained clear and understandable, okay? And I think what I want to do is bring my decades of experience to just, you know, hey, let's just relax. Let me just get this information to you. This is not a school. I'm not going to give you a grade. Okay, but if you're interested in learning math, you absolutely can, so please don't give up. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to this problem and talk about how we can fix this up. All right, so we have 3 over the square root of 18. We recognize that uh, this is not a situation where we have like 3 over the square root of 25. Okay, so we can't just say blindly, oh, anytime you're dividing by a square root, uh, that's a, a problem. No, because the square root of 25 here we can uh, take the square root of 25, which of course is five. Okay, so this is uh, nothing more than three uh, fifths. It's when the square roots that we're dealing with is an irrational number. And with experience, you'll come to uh, kind of see what's an irrational number or what isn't, okay? So the square root of 18, that's not a perfect square. It's not something like four, nine, 16, 25, et cetera. Things that we can take the square root of perfectly. So this, in fact, is uh, something we're going to have to fix up. So how can we fix this up? Well, let's go and get into this right now. And this is the way I like to explain this. This is what we call rationalizing the denominator. Okay, that's a fancy term. But basically, uh, what we're going to be doing is using a little bit of a trick here to get this square root out of the denominator. Okay, it's perfectly okay. Uh, let me just uh, make this um, comment here. If you have the square root of seven over three, where the irrational number is in the numerator, that's okay, okay? No problem there. It's when uh, the square root, uh, the irrational number is in the denominator, not when it's in the numerator. So this is okay, okay? This is not okay. All right, so how can we fix this up? We're gonna use this little trick, and this is how I like to explain it. So if we take a number, any number that you like, and we multiply that number by one. What's the answer? Okay, if I take four, multiply by one, it's just the number, right? This times one is nothing more than this. All right, no problem there. I think most of us understand that. So what we're gonna be doing here is be uh, we're gonna use a fancy one, 
we're going to take this number and we're going to multiply it by one, okay, to fix this up. But again, a number multiplied by one is just the number, so we're not breaking the problem here, but we are going to use a fancy one. Okay, so let me ask you another question, okay? Any number divided by itself is what? Just one. Take any number. Matter of fact, uh, we'll take, uh, let's say, 10 to the fifth power divided by 10 to the fifth power. It doesn't make a difference. Anything divided by itself is one. Okay, so I'm going to um, use a fancy one, and the one that I'm going to be uh, using here is 18 divided by 18, okay? Again, anything divided by itself is one. Now, most algebra students will just be like, okay, I'm gonna take this here and I'm gonna multiply both the numerator and denominator by that number. But, uh, you know, sometimes when uh, people just kind of, you know, remember a little uh, tactic, if you will, they may, uh, you know, forget the reason why they're doing this, okay? I like to kind of give a little bit more of an explanation so that way it can kind of stick into your long-term memory. Okay, so, what we're gonna do is take this thing and multiply it by one, and the one that we're gonna uh, use is this fancy one right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So here's our number, three over the square root 18. We're gonna multiply it by one. Okay, of course, the one that I'm using is this nice fancy one right here. But when I do this, all kinds of great things happen. Okay, now remember, when we're multiplying fractions, so we've got to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So let's start with the denominators because that's really the most important part of this problem. Okay, so the square root of 18 times the square root of 18 is just 18. Anytime you have the square root of anything, uh, let's say the square root of x times the square root of x, it's just the number x, okay? Let's just go to play this out. The square root of four times the square root of four is equal to the square root of four times four, which is the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is four, okay? So, you know, we don't have to go through all that. The square root of four times the square root of four, just drop the square root, it's four, okay? So the square root of 18 times the square root of 18, you could do all the math there, but it's just 18. All right, so if you understand that, then look what we just did, okay? We got that irrational number out of the denominator, so we're very, very happy about that. And then three times the square root of 18 is uh, nothing more than three times the square root of 18, just like this, over 18. So we just changed the problem from, you know, uh, this having, a, um, you know, an issue with an irrational number in the denominator to no longer having an irrational number in the denominator. So we're very happy about this, but here is the deal. We can continue to simplify this problem, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. So uh, again, just like, you know, when you're dealing with any kind of fraction, this is a fraction situation, you would never leave your final answer like 100 over 200, okay? Your teacher would take points off and then you'd be very upset and you'd be like, I should have listened to that guy on YouTube. Uh, he was right, listen, you always have to simplify your answers completely. And this is not too difficult. So we have three times the square root of 18 over 18. Well, look here, three can go into 18 six times, right? So just, you know, basic fraction concepts. If you uh, didn't understand it, 18 is the same thing as three times six. So we're cross canceling those like factors. So we're left with the square root of 18 over six. But guess what? It gets better, okay? We could continue to simplify uh, more than just this, okay? So we're on our way uh, to making the simplest version of this value, but what we have to do is use a property of square roots. So the square root of 18, I can write this as the square root of its factors. So 18 is six times three, but it's also nine times two. And I'm interested in using the nine because nine is a perfect square. Okay, so if you can find factors like 4, 9, 16, 25, uh, these type of factors, these are called perfect squared factors, this will really allow you to simplify a, a square root or radical. Okay, so this, now by the way too, I'm kind of, um, you know, for some of you, it might be going a little bit too quick. Uh, if you need help with this above and beyond this video, uh, let me give you a few suggestions. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that cover square roots and radicals, but really what you want is like my formal best instruction. Probably check out my Algebra 1 course. You'll find a link to it in the description below. Okay, so the square root of 18, I'm gonna write it as the square root of nine times two, not the square, as the square root of six times 
uh, 3, nothing wrong here, but I don't have any perfect square factors. If I write it as 9 times 2, I'm like, oh, look, I have 9. That's a perfect square factor. And you'll see why it's awesome to have these perfect square factors. All right, so the square root of 9 times 2 is the same thing as square root of 18. Now I could take this big square root and break it up into two individual square roots. This is the kind of secret in order to fully simplify this problem. Okay, so the square root of 9 times 2 is equal to the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. Now this is where it's going to get really exciting. Okay, so the square root of 9 times the square root of 2 individually over 6. Well, what's the square root of 9? The square root of 9 is 3. Okay, so now I have 3 times the square root of 2 over 6. And now I could take that 3, put, uh, divide it into that 6 2 times, and I'm left with the answer the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so I know that this seems like a lot of steps, and I guess it is if you're learning it for the first time, but uh, here's the deal. If you understood everything that, you know, my explanation, and hopefully I gave you a nice, clear, and understandable explanation, here's the thing. you got to remember, when it comes to mathematics, watching, okay, uh, someone do math, and this is a very big problem with a lot of people who, especially math students, they'll sit and they'll be like to watch their teacher on the chalkboard or whiteboards and they'll be like, da, 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 da. They're looking. They're like, yes, yes, I understand. No problem. Then later, a few hours later, when they go to do their homework, they're like, uh, I'm totally lost. How do they need it? If, by the way, too, if you're not taking notes, that's not good. You must take notes. But another thing that I want to say is this. You don't get better at watching math, uh, better at math by watching math, okay? If you want to get better at basketball, would you watch TV? Would you watch the NBA, college basketball day? Is that going to make you better? No, okay? You actually have to go practice. And when you go practice your basketball skills, uh, how many uh, shots are you going to try to make? If you make one and you're like, oh, look, I made the shot. I'm good. Therefore, I must be a certified professional expert in basketball. Well, no, you just maybe got lucky. You have to kind of challenge yourself. You got to shoot over here. You got to shoot over here. You got to do all kinds of different work. You got to go over and over again. It's because basketball is a skill, okay, just like math. And, you know, you're going to get uh, out of it what you put into it, okay? So, you know, it all starts from uh, someone encouraging you, telling you that you can do it. And that's where, for me, that's my biggest passion is to reach uh, those people out there that really have a tough time with math. And I'm just saying, hey, listen, whoever told you that, if even if it's for yourself, it's not true. Okay, you can be great at math, but you're going to have to work at it and you have to get great instruction and you're going to have to put in the practice. There are no shortcuts, but you can be successful if you're willing to do the work. Okay, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.